before we start, I have a question to you. Uh, do you use any tools, any online tools or any types of technology to work on speaking skills with your students? Okay, thank you, Natalia. We'll talk about it today. Okay, so um, let's start then the discussion. Voice thread, okay, thank you, Natalia. Uh, so, language skills 2.0 speaking. Uh, speaking is so much a part of our daily life that uh, usually people take it for granted, right? So, the average person produces tens of thousands of words every day, sometimes even more depending on, on the person's job. And um, the process of speaking is so natural that we forget how we once struggled um, to achieve this ability in our native language until we have to learn how to do it all over again in a foreign language. So, Speaking in the first language is largely unconscious, and we, we rarely reflect on what is involved, right? Uh, in order to understand what our learners experience when they are talking uh, in English as a second language, let's try to brainstorm uh, what's involved in speaking. Okay, so think about the situation when you need to communicate some idea in uh, any additional language that you've ever learned or just in any random language. Okay, so what aspects uh, you need to cover to make this communication successful? Okay, so what, uh, what do you need to know? Okay, you can type in your suggestions, your ideas in the chat box. Vocabulary, okay, thank you, Ming, okay. Okay, so what's involved in speaking? Hi, Karen, right, pronunciation, exactly. Body language, okay. Okay, great. Yes, you're exactly right. So. Uh, we need at least a basic knowledge of the phonological system of the given language, right? So we need to know how to articulate new sounds. Uh, we need to have uh, the prosodic awareness, uh, so uh, intonation, sentence stress, uh, vocabulary, right? Grammar, word collocations. Uh, not to say about content, uh, so speaking uh, is tightly overlapping with the thinking process uh, and etiquette rules and body language that you have mentioned. Uh, plus, speech production takes place in real time uh, and it's spontaneous. It doesn't mean that speech is unplanned and chaotic, so the planning uh, in, the real t in the real life is severely limited. Try to recall uh, any conversation that you've just had uh, and uh, think about the planning of one idea um, may overlap with the production of the previous one, right? And moreover, it's influenced by it. So combined with self-monitoring and constant um, and all the components of the uh, oral speech production that we've just enumerated, uh, you can see that for a language learner, speaking is a constant multitasking. So uh, sometimes it's very de demanding or it can be even draining for some people if we add to this um, stress and anxiety that uh, people might experience when uh, they have to talk in a foreign language. Uh, at the same time, English as an additional language speakers 
would hardly survive, right, if speaking was that extreme mental activity. So gradually learners, they achieve some degree of fluency and uh, in order to be there, they need some degree of automaticity. Uh, in, in this sense, speaking is as any other skill that we acquire, for example, uh, playing soccer or uh, driving and so on. And uh, the more practice you get in speaking, the more likely you will be able to improve and to succeed, right? So uh, when in class, uh, your learners uh, have a chance to speak and to receive your feedback, uh, your guidance, your tips, uh, your encouragement. They can um, receive their peers' opinion and so on. And by, uh, but this practice is, uh, this practice time is limited by your lesson time. And if you have several learners in your class, it reduces proportionally. So each learner will get even less speaking practice uh, guided by you as an instructor. And um, luckily, when a person lives in an English-speaking country, uh, like your learners, um, they have unlimited opportunities to practice their speaking skills um, outside your classroom in their everyday life. For example, uh, when they attend community events or when they go gro grocery shopping or when they ride on the bus and so on. Uh, usually, there is no follow-up in this case though. So, uh, people do not receive feedback on their speaking, uh, on their speaking samples, on their speaking production. Um, there is a way to extend the limits of the students' talking time in your classes, and not just by reducing teachers' talking time. So let your students uh, practice speaking asynchronously. Asynchronously, uh, not in real time. So you can expand time boundaries of, uh, of your classroom time by introducing some of the speaking activities via free web 2.0 tools or online tools. Uh, your, let your learners record their speeches and uh, keep, uh, ask them keep audio or video blogs about anything that's happening in their life. Uh, show them how they can participate on voice discussion boards. Um, we are going to discuss these activities and uh, some other activities in a minute. Um, but I'd like to mention that uh, in case of asynchronous speaking activities, the spontaneity of the live conversation uh, will be partially lost. Uh, so your students will have um, all the time in the world to plan their speech. Uh, they will have an opportunity to record it, to listen to it, and to re-record it if they're not happy with their speech sample, right? Uh, but this strategy can add a reflective dimension to their learning. Uh, and this is where differs this type of activities of their daily life chit chats on the street. Uh, so they will get all the, uh, they will get live conversations, uh, live dialects in your classroom and let them practice on their own outside your classroom by introducing those Web 2.0 tools. Uh, and besides, uh, asynchronous speaking opportunities can open um, a whole range of activities that are useful for language learners in their way to their autonomy. So if uh, one of your goals is to force the learner's autonomy, then introduce those tools and encourage them to complete tasks that uh, are not even in your lesson plan. So encourage them to um, practice those skills on their own. Uh, this time we are discussing Web 2.0 tools uh, that uh, might help your learners practice their speaking skills anytime and anywhere. Uh, in March, we had a webinar, Teaching with Technology webinar, Language Skills 2.0 Writing. Uh, anyone attended? So we were discussing online tools for writing tasks.
highlights. Okay, now. Okay, so then I have a question to you. Uh, what's Web 2.0 and why people call those online tools Web 2.0 tools? Why two? Okay, so you can type in your answers in the chat box. So let's brainstorm. Um, oh, Karen, yes, I the link to that webinar is on the next slide. Okay, four skills, and this is the second compared to Web 1. Okay, okay, great. Yes, exactly, Karen. So uh, it all started with uh, Web 1.0. So it was the first version of the web. Uh, and um, it was a repository of uh, information. So it was um, the read-only web. And the average Internet user's role was limited to reading the information which was presented to, to them. Uh, so there was static content and um, no or limited user interaction. Uh, Web 2.0, so version 2, uh, represents a shift uh, in the way the Internet is used. And um, it marks a change from the presentation of static, unchangeable content to providing more dynamic and shared experiences. So Web 2.0 or Read, Write, Publish Web, it's a platform for participation and collaboration. Uh, and its philosophy includes uh, creating a web page that visitors can impact or change. Uh, and this ability for internet users to collaborate, create, share content uh, with other users um, may prove especially useful for language learners. So um, this is the link to our previous webinar on writing skills. So if you click on it, it will open uh, in a new tab. And you can watch the recording after this session. Uh, and today, let's discuss uh, Web 2.0 tools for speaking skills. So first of all, I'd like to talk with you about voice recording. Uh, so why is it important while working on speaking skills to record your uh, speech samples? Okay, so what do you think? Why it's important? Phonology, okay, great. Any other suggestions? Improvement, exactly. So uh, if you ask your learners to record themselves, they can listen to what they've said afterwards with no multitasking, no anxiety, and it gives them a chance to fully concentrate on their language production, uh, trying to, th to find those things to improve. Uh, voice recording. Um, is not a new concept in language teaching or public speaking, uh, but with today's variety of online tools for digital uh, audio recording, it's just a matter of two clicks. So even if your learners are not very comfortable with technology, uh, there are lots of tools that uh, just have two buttons, record and pause, and we are going to look at them, uh, that uh, will help them uh, take advantage of today's technology. So uh, the first tool that I'd like to uh, talk about today is Vocaroo. Um, have you ever used this tool? Okay, no, okay. So um, it is very. It has a very simple interface. Uh, so basically, when you 
go to their website, you will see only this picture. So you will see on the, only the record button. Uh, and then you'll have an option to stop your recording, to listen to it, to retry if you're not happy, and then save it or share it via email or um, via social media. So uh, there is no fixed limit on the message length. So uh, no registration is required, so we just go to this website and start recording. Um, if, uh, if you have a Skype session, if you teach online and you have an uh, online session via any communication tool, for example Skype, uh, and you want to work to discuss the speaking samples with your learner in real time, you can, what you can do, you can introduce this tool to your learner. Ask your learner to record himself or herself. So technically, you will listen this speech live because uh, you are uh, both of you are on Skype. Uh, make notes um, on any successes or challenges, and then ask your learner to listen to the to that recording and discuss those aspects. Um, if you uh, if you teach face-to-face, -face, then you can do the same thing in class, or you can ask your learners to record their speaking samples before the class. Okay? Um, how uh, you can use this tool? Uh, it's a great alternative to text emails. So encourage your learners to send you voice emails instead of text ones. Uh, so. Uh, and you can do the same thing. So uh, your learner will practice speaking uh, and listening skills. Uh, also, you can flip your speaking classes. So give a speaking prompt before your class. Uh, let your students talk about this topic asynchronously, uh, so even before coming to your class. Then they can share it with you and with their peers, listen to that speech recordings, and in class you can discuss their speaking samples and keep that conversation going. Um, okay, so um, another tool that we are going to discuss today is called AudioPal. Uh, have you ever used this tool? Or have you heard of it before? No, okay. Okay, so um, this tool is very similar to Vocaroo, uh, with the only difference that it allows you to record your voice messages uh, even from your phone, so you, they have a dialing number that you can use. Uh, but um, if you want to use the, uh, your computer microphone, uh, the voice message will be limited to 60 seconds. Okay, so... Um, it might be why I decided to show it to you, uh, because it might be particularly useful if you want to, um, if you want your learners to practice giving brief answers. For example, if you're working on um, job interview skills, uh, you can ask your learner to record the answer to the questions, to the interview question, tell us a few words about yourself. Uh, within those 60 seconds, right? Or you can practice uh, leaving a phone message, um, phone messages using this tool so that your learner uh, will have this time limit and will try to uh, express uh, his or her main ideas. Um, it's not an app, uh, so this is just a screenshot, uh, a partial screenshot of their website. Uh, so if you go to their website, uh, you'll see uh, this media player that you can use for recording. I'm not sure if they have an app, probably they do, uh, but you can use it uh, online uh, using your web browser, okay? So this is just a screenshot. Okay, okay, great. Um, Okay, any questions? So you can ask them in the chat box and I will try to answer them right away. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the at another tool. Um, some of you ha has mentioned it um, in the beginning of the webinar. It's called MailVu. Oh, it was Natalia, <laughs> right. So uh, it's called MailVu and 
uh, the idea is technically the same, so it allows you to record your voice messages with your video. So you record video messages. Uh, you can use it if you want to uh, work on body language or if you want your learner to see uh, his or her gestures and mimics or if you want to discuss articulation and so on. Uh, and you, you can also use it instead of your text email, so you can just send your learner a video email. Yes, app, yes, it is free, and all the tools that we are discussing uh, at Teaching with Technology webinars, they are free. Some of them uh, have freemium model, which means that they have a free account and a premium one if you want to upgrade their services. But all the tools that we are discussing are absolutely free to use, okay? Uh, and uh, if you're interested in exploring more ideas on how to use webcam uh, for your EL, ESL classes, there is a nice blog post by Nick Peach. It's called 20 Webcam Activities for EFL, ESL Students. So if you click uh, on this link, you'll uh, get the list of the activities that he suggests. Uh, and you can explore them after the webinar, okay? And uh, they have 1,000 second limits per message. It's 16 minutes, 40 seconds. So it's, um, it's enough time for your learners to produce speech samples and share them with you, okay? Uh, so, Oh, okay, thank you, Natalia, for your comment. Yes, it's really a great tool. And you can use it not only for your teaching. You can uh, impress your colleagues or friends by, send, by emailing them your video message. Okay. Okay, great. So um, the next tool that we are discussing today is called SoundCloud. Okay. Yes, writing dictations. Thank you, Natalia. You can use all those speech recording tools for dictations. Okay, so SoundCloud. Have you uh, have you heard of this one? Okay, so uh, it's an online uh, audio distribution platform that allows users to record their sound. Uh, their sound, their sound tracks, and share them share them with other people. Okay, and um, it has it allows you to have up to two hours of your um, recordings stored in one account at one time. So if you if you reach that two hour limit, then you can just delete your previous recordings, and and that's it. And you uh, you'll have uh, extra space again, okay, and it's, uh, again, it's very similar to the previous tools uh, with one major difference. It allows you to, it allows you and other users to comment on your uh, speaking samples. Uh, so it will give you an opportunity to provide feedback that is tied directly to the recording. Uh, and even more, your comments uh, could be tied to the exact second of the uh, of the student's recording. For example, when a student uh, pronounces um, something incorrectly, or when they use the wrong verb form, or uh, if you want to praise them for pronouncing a new word particularly well. Uh, so if you see, okay, well, zoom in a little bit. So if you see there, there are teeny tiny icons, these are my comments, and if you hover your mouse over them, you will see the comment. Okay, so you can leave comments whether uh, on a certain point, on a certain even second of your, of your student's recording, or you can leave a general comment if you want to comment on the content, for instance. Um, and also, your learners, they can ask questions about their speech productions, and you can reply to them using this tool. Uh, so what other aspects uh, could be evaluated through this type of asynchronous 
uh, speaking activities. Okay, we have a question. Is that the platform this site uses to keep uh, seminars? Uh, no, sound... You mean this webinar that we are having right now? So SoundCloud, it's not for webinars. Uh, you can um, record your speech and share it, and other people will listen to it and get your message. This is true, but uh, the platform that we're using right now is called Big Blue Button. It allows you to have the chat box, the video stream, um, slides, and so on. So these two tools are a little bit different. Uh, we will discuss a tool that will allow you to uh, create asynchronous webinars in a few uh, in, in a few minutes okay uh, so if you uh, so if you decide to use SoundCloud uh, you can comment not only on speaking successes and challenges right you can comment on the content uh, and encourage your learners to create new tracks and if you have several learners go for peer review and peer learning uh, and encourage them to comment on each other's tracks uh, if you are looking for more collaborative opportunities for your learners to practice speaking skills asynchronously uh, and if you want them to interact with other people, uh, you need to check out two more tools. Uh, those are voice-based collaboration platforms. Uh, the first one is called Boxer Pop. Uh, it's, um, have you ever used a discussion board or online forum where you're typing your messages and other people can comment on them. So this is exactly the same thing with the only difference that you use your voice. You record your voice messages. Uh, so it uh, enables users to um, record their speaking, to listen to other, people, other people's speaking samples and to comment on them also using their voice. Uh, so this is how um, it looks like you have the initial voice message and then people just respond to it leaving their messages uh, on the voice discussion board. Um, there, is, there are plenty of ways that you can, uh, uh, how you can use these tools for language teaching. For example, you can record a series of um, of statements and ask your students to respond to each one, uh, encourage them to keep this discussion going uh, and um, involve them in, in those conversations. And all this will happen even before your class take, takes place. Uh, and uh, if we are talking about asynchronous voice collaboration, uh, people do not need do not necessarily need to be online at the same time. So you leave your message in the morning, uh, your learners comment on, the, on it in the evening when they have time or even over the weekend and then they listen to other comments and so on. So you can use, this, use it as a supplement to your speaking um, lessons. Okay, uh, you can work on narrative building. So. Uh, record the first sentence of the story and then ask your students to listen to it uh, and add a, a sentence each to the new story. So they will listen to the thread and uh, will continue this story. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, record some statements about yourself or any general statements and get students to leave questions for you to find out which of these statements are true uh, and which are false. Uh, you can leave your answers as voice messages as well. Uh, you can use this tool uh, to brainstorm some activities, for, sorry, some ideas. For example, you can use it as a uh, pre-reading or pre-listening activity uh, with the speaking as your hidden agenda. Uh, you can think about some fine icebreakers uh, and ask, for example, before uh, you can use it as getting to know each other activity uh, and have it before your first class. Okay. Uh, do you have any other ideas how we can use this tool uh, for practicing speaking skills?
Okay, so uh, you can type them in the chat box. Okay, so what types of activities uh, would you introduce if you decided to use this tool? Okay, okay, yeah, sure, take your time exploring those tools. Uh, for reading after the class. Um, okay, so uh, you can... Uh, you can definitely use discussion boards for reading if those are text-based dis uh, discussion boards. Uh, if it's a voice-based discussion board like Voxapop, uh, then uh, it will be more, uh, it will make more sense to use it for speaking. At the same time, you can um, include some reading texts there and ask your students to comment on them too. Why not? Okay, pronunciation correction, okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so the other tool um, that you can use for online collaboration is called VoiceThread. Uh, have you heard of this tool before? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, we had a webinar on this tool, right? So uh, I think in November, it was called Voice Thread for Digital Conversations, and we discussed lots of uh, ideas of activities, how you can use those asynchronous conversations for your EL, ESL classes. Uh, so for those who uh, didn't participate in that webinar. Uh, VoiceThread, uh, it's uh, an online tool that turns media files into asynchronous conversations using voice comments. So you can upload any content you like, for example, um, PowerPoint slides or PDF or images or videos and ask your learners to comment on those uh, on those resources using the uh, using their voice comments feature. So students will uh, talk about um, the PowerPoint presentation that you prepared for them, for example, uh, or they can even create their own uh, virtual presentations. Uh, and um, you can, if you click on this link, you will open the recording of the um, Teaching with Technology webinar and you can watch it after this session, or you can just look through the slides and uh, get an idea how this tool can be used for EL, ESL classes, okay? Um, another um, opportunity that online tools give us in terms of practicing speaking skills asynchronously uh, is the opportunity to keep uh, audio or video journals. Uh, so digital uh, digital audio recording, um, it's an excellent opportunity to collect the portfolio of speaking samples. Uh, you can encourage your learners to keep audio or video journals and or blogs um, and reflect on any events in their lives. Uh, Anything they find interesting and motivating and uh, exciting, for example, their uh, trips across the province or social events they've attended or their career path in Canada, new things that they've learned this week. So absolutely anything. And it's important for them to record those messages on a regular basis uh, and uh, so that they have this opportunity to um, uh, to compare their speaking samples made six months ago, for example, with their current speaking skills. Uh, so one of the platforms that you can uh, introduce to your learners as an audio blog platform is called AudioBoo. Uh, and it allows users to create a series of audio tracks or podcasts and share them with other people and comment on them. Uh, so when, uh, with their free time, 
uh, sorry, with a free plan, you'll get unlimited posts with the maximum time duration duration of 10 minutes per post. Uh, they call them boosts. So you will have unlimited boosts, 10, minute, 10 minutes long each. Uh, and as in any, as in a regular blog, when you have text posts, you will have audio um, tracks. Uh, and if you decide to introduce audio blog activities to your learners, uh, they should be, I mean, the activities should be focused on fluency rather than on accuracy. Uh, it's a reflective practice uh, that will allow not only um, help your learners improve their speaking skills, but also develop their critical thinking skills and uh, by analyzing current events in their lives and so on. Uh, if um, if you want to uh, include the uh, body language, then you should think about uh, think about introducing video blogs, uh, or people call them vlogs. Uh, so you can um, uh, use YouTube for this purpose. So if you have a YouTube account. Uh, and when you click on this uh, upload button, it will give you a list of options. And first of them is webcam capture. So um, you can record directly from your webcam. And this recording will be saved on your YouTube account in your channel. Um, and uh, this technique, um, I mean, keeping a video blog, uh, is particularly useful for those people and not necessarily language learners who'd like to work on their public speaking skills. So that from recording to recording, they will see their progress and they will work on certain um, skills. For example, uh, probably they might decide to work on reducing, uh, on uh, getting rid of their speaking tics, such as like or you know, or write, and so on. Uh, and um, as far as we touched upon public speaking skills, uh, let's have a look uh, at one more tool. Um, everyone knows how important presentation making, presentation skills are in Canadian workplace culture, right? Uh, and um, again, as in any other skill, the more practice you get, the better. And um, I think everyone uh, will agree that um, asking your learners to make a presentation in class is very time consuming. And um, if you have several learners, sometimes it's even impossible to listen to all of them, uh, to all the presentation presentations, not to say to discuss them and analyze some specific moments. Uh, so what you can do uh, with the use of free online tools, you can flip your uh, public speaking classes. Um, so you can ask your learners to do a research, prepare slides, and present before, even before coming to your class. Uh, and then in class, uh, you'll be able to discuss those presentations, uh, analyze some particular moments, and they will be able to receive feedback and ask questions they have. Uh, so uh, there is a tool that allows you to add video narration to your slides, uh, and it's called Novio. So uh, your learners um, uh, can, they just, up, oh, sorry. They just upload uh, their slides. Uh, and then they narrate them and record their video message. Uh, and uh, basically what they'll get will be an asynchronous webinar. So for example, if you, if you have, if you've ever w watched the, any webinar recording, it look uh, almost the same, right? So you, uh, you can see the slides and you can uh, see and hear the person talking, the presenter. Uh, and, um, uh, they, on their website, they say that there is no time limit per, per presentation, and this tool is free. So you can, uh, if you decided to work on uh, public speaking skills on 
presentation skills with your learners, this might be uh, a good tool for you to uh, save some time in class for further discussion. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, okay great. Then let's um, have a look at one more tool. Uh, so, oh, okay, great, thank you. So it's called karaoke party. Uh, so, ask your learners to sing along, why not? It's also a great practice for um, when they work on their speaking skills. Um, the lyrics of uh, pop songs are often very, are often uh, conversational so that your learners can learn lots um, of common expressions uh, by listening to this to those songs and uh, it's easier to remember words when um, when they are used together with music uh, that's why sometimes you can get a song out of your head for the whole day and uh, we we can hardly say the same thing about poems right so uh, this is a fun website that you can use whether in class or uh, just introduce to your learners and encourage them to play with it on their own. It's, uh, and technically it's a social network, so you can sing a karaoke online and get a score based on your performance. And as you practice, um, your score uh, might improve. And moreover, your learners can challenge their friends uh, in becoming next karaoke champion. Uh, and all you need is just um, a microphone, whether built in uh, or connected to your computer. Okay, and um, it's a fun way. Yeah, it's it's, it's fun, right? <laughs> and uh, it's a fun way to learn how to articulate sounds. So if you decided to use uh, this tool in class, first let your learners to listen to the original song and then while singing uh, this song they will try to imitate those sounds. Uh, they will learn new vocabulary and memorize lexical, new lexical chunks and grammar structures uh, and they will be able to use, uh, to use those structures and uh, new words and new lexical chunks in their um, daily life com um, conversations later. Okay, um, so to sum up today's webinar, um, I'd like to mention that uh, to some extent any asynchronous speaking activity is based on a very old, well-known uh, technique approved by millions and millions of language learners and polyglots, um, a technique which, which is a great way to automaticity. Uh, do you have any suggestions uh, what technique I am talking about? Drills? Uh, not exactly. Uh, this technique is called talking to yourself. Uh, it's important to think in your target language, uh, but it's more important to move your mouth and get used to new sounds. Uh, besides, when, uh, when you talk to yourself in a foreign language, you become aware of holes um, in your target language, such as vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, so uh, it helps you focus on um, um, it helps you focus on some specific areas for improvement. And besides, when you talk to yourself, there is no anxiety, uh, no stress, and it's free, right? So you can uh, do it anytime and anywhere. Uh, and um, Okay, great. Thank you, Karen, for your comment. Uh, and uh, you can even do it uh, in, a pub, in a public place if you fake a phone conversation, for example. Uh, so why then do we need all those tools for asynchronous, for 
uh, to practice speaking skills asynchronously uh, if your learners can just talk to themselves. So why we spend the whole hour discussing those tools, you might wonder. So any suggestions? Why do we need, why do we need tools for uh, asynchronous speaking activities? Feedback, exactly. OK, great. Uh, thank you. So um, exactly, so you extend your feedback beyond the time limits of your online session or your classroom walls. So if your learners share their speaking samples that they produced on their own, uh, technically talking to themselves, uh, you will be able to uh, share your feedback to uh, give them some recommendations on further improvement and so on. Uh, besides, uh, you, uh, this using Activities used uh, introduced by using these tools uh, encourage uh, them, encourage your learners to uh, have conversations with their peers outside the classroom. And people uh, do not; there is no schedule issue, so people do not necessarily need to be online at the same time. They can comment on the, um, on other people's ideas asynchronously. And um, there is no doubt that uh, responding to someone's uh, ideas, to someone's voice message, is more natural and thought-provoking uh, than producing a monologue or a fake dialogue. Uh, also, uh, you will teach them uh, you will teach your learners how to identify areas for improvement while listening for their speaking samples. And that's very important, how to analyze their progress. So your learners record, they reflect on, they listen to it, reflect on their recording, analyze it, and they see, they uh, literally, they can uh, listen to uh, to those moments that they need to improve. Uh, and um, um, last but not least, um, and moreover, your learners will get this opportunity to uh, record, listen, and retry, re-record. Uh, even if it's time consuming, this will give them that uh, chance to uh, work on on their on their speaking skills on the particular moments. Just imagine um, how many times they would uh, uh, they would pronounce this or that phrase, right? Uh, and last but not least, um, when you introduce new digital tools for your learners, you expand their digital fluency. So who knows? Maybe your learner will suggest using this or that tool that you introduced to them uh, for some project at a job interview, right? And will impress a potential employer. Uh, and also, when you learn new tools, you uh, improve your digital skills that you that can be used not just for your teaching but uh, uh, in your daily life. Uh, and um, I encourage you to try at least one of the tools that we've been discussing today and see how uh, how it will work with your learners. Okay, uh, so do you have any questions, any comments? Um, okay, so Karen has a question if these programs are for online use only. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, they are online tools, so you do not need to um, download anything or install anything. So you just go to the website, uh, and um, some of these tools require registration. Some of them are registration free, uh, and but all of these tools are free, so no cost involved, whether for you or your students. Um, Yes, thank you for, for your comments. Uh, this webinar, as well as all, our, all other English online webinars, are archived on our website. Um, I will upload the recording of this webinar, as well as these slides and um, handout materials, materials later next week. Uh, so you can just 
uh, click on the link that you used, that I've sent to you if you are our volunteer or that someone shared with you, uh, where there is a brief description of this session, and you will find those uh, resources there. Okay, just give me one second. I will um, give this link to you. Okay, so... Check back later next week and you'll find all the resources there, okay? And are the, are the recordings accessible to anyone on the web or just to a group, student group? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you use such recording, such tools as Vocaroo or Mailroo, you share your recordings with an exact person or you share them by a social network so that uh, whether uh, the person will get it as an email or your social network contacts will will be able to listen to it. Uh, if you're talking about the, um, if we're talking about audio or video blogs or voice thread or Voxapop, then you can play with their privacy settings and you can whether have your uh, recordings open to public or they might be private and only people uh, who are a part of that group or who um, who have the link can access those recordings. Especially if you decide to introduce video blogs to your learners uh, by YouTube, uh, draw their attention to the um, to the web security. So. Uh, Automatically, all videos recorded on, on YouTube are public, so um, ask them to change that settings to the um, unlisted, so that only you and other students can access them, but not the uh, whole community. Okay? So there is a language skills 1.0 speaking uh, archived. No, we didn't have uh, the... Okay, so um, the title of this webinar is language 2.0 speaking, which means that um, we talked about Web 2.0 tools. It doesn't mean that this is the second version of, uh, of the webinar, no. So we had the webinar on uh, Web 2.0 tools for writing, uh, and it is archived on our, on our website. Okay? Great. And I also want to uh, remind you, there are there are lots of volunteers among our participants today. Um, and uh, if you'd like to become an e-volunteer at English Online, if you want to um, feel what, what it likes to teach online, uh, then contact me and uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions and to uh, share all the resources on our program. Uh, and uh, we have ESL e-tutors, we have career e-mentors, and we have settlement e-volunteers. So if you know anyone who might be interested in contributing to the community, uh, you feel free to share my contact information. Uh, will be future webinars for other skills. Uh, you can find the um, full um, schedule of the webinars on our website, just give me one second. So we had, um, every month uh, we have a webinar on how to use online tools for language teaching uh, or for uh, tutoring and mentoring and uh, we discussed um, we had a separate webinar on writing and we had a separate webinar on speaking. Uh, I do not uh, see the need for having a webinar on reading and listening because those are uh, receptive skills and you do not need any online collaborative tools to work on those skills, right? So, but we discuss listening activities and uh, reading and writing and speaking activities in all our webinars, okay? 
Great, and this is my contact information. Um, this webinar is recognized by TESOL Ontario as a PD activity, so if uh, you need to accumulate uh, extra PD hours, just let me know and I will send you your uh, certificate of participation. And uh, everyone, if you need um, an evidence of your professional development, uh, please email me within one hour after this session and I will send you your certificates next week. Okay? So you can see my email on this slide. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you for your great ideas and for your active participation. I hope uh, you'll get something for your context, for your learners from this session. And uh, I will see you online. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.